بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم میں ڈیئر سٹوڈنٹ آئی ایم انجینئر حسن خان این دس از ففتھ لیکچر آف انجینئرنگ ہائیڈرالوجی ان دس لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس میئرمنٹ آف پرسپٹیشن ڈفرینٹ ٹائپس آف رین گیجز رین گیج نیٹ ورک فسٹ آف آل ہاؤ پرسپٹیشن از میئر All forms of precipitation are measured on the basis of the vertical depth of water that would accumulate on a level surface if the precipitation remained where it fell. The amount of precipitation is measured in units of depth, that is millimeter and inches. This is a very simple procedure for measurement of precipitation. You can mirror any precipitation, any rainfall at your home. If you have a cylindrical uh, equipment like cane of ghee and cut it one end clearly you and kept it in open atmosphere to collect the rainfall water and after stopping the rainfall you can mirror the depth of water in the cane. and this depth is should be measured in millimeter or inches this is called the amount of precipitation and if you measure and you take a stopwatch and measure the time also then you can calculate intensity of the rainfall so let's it is raining kept a cylindrical equipment beneath the rain it is raining so then it has fell up to some level if we measure this depth in the cylinder this is now the amount of precipitation in millimeter or inches now the precipitation is measured by rain gauges or precipitation gauges you know There are two types of rain gauges. One is non-recording rain gauge and the second is recording rain gauge. By non-recording mean that this is not actually automated one. So we need an observer who will take reading from non-recording rain gauge for rain. And he has to record the time also for for calculation of intensity of rainfall the in the recording rain gauges we get the rain recorded automatically with respect to time so intensity of rainfall is also known now what is uh, non recording or standard gauge non recording is also the standard gauge The standard gauge used by the US Weather Bureau has a collector of 200. The diameter of this collector or funnel, you can say funnel, is how much? 200 mm. And the height of this cylinder is how much? It is total 600 mm. For this cylinder, a permanent assembly is fixed in concrete over this area and it is to be noted that this cylinder should always be at right angle with the ground exactly vertical so rain passes from a collector into a cylindrical mirroring tube inside the cylinder there is a cylindrical mirroring tube on which there is a graduation of measurement in millimeter or inches so the water passes from this funnel or collector into this cylindrical measurement tube the measuring tube has a cross sectional area 1/10th of the collector so the 2.5 mm rainfall will fill the tube to 25 mm depth it means that the cross sectional area of this tube 
is one tenth of the cross sectional area of this large cylinder so the you know the diameter of this cylinder is how much it is 200 millimeter and the diameter of this will be 20 millimeter so if you have but actually we need the depth of water in this large cylinder so the water in this large cylinder should be measured but for measurement of this water we will use this small measuring tube to simplify the measurement so the water if a water of 2.5 millimeter depth is here in this large cylinder and we poured this water into the smearing tube it will fill the mirroring tube up to 25 millimeter so 25 millimeter mean 2.5 millimeter of rainfall the collector and tube are removed when snow is expected if we expect snow the funnel and tube are removed the snow is collected in the outer container of our overflow cane is melted poured into the mirroring tube and then measured this type of rain gauge is one of the most commonly used rain gauges here is a, an animated video of this simple measurement procedure let's see when we measure daily precipitation we measure to the nearest hundredth of an inch you may have noticed that your rain gauge has both an outer and inner cylinder when water falls into the outer cylinder it would be extremely difficult to measure the depth with accuracy the inner tube acts as a magnifier. By squeezing the water into this smaller diameter inner tube, it stretches the measurement out in order to see the depth to the nearest hundredth of an inch. One inch in the outer cylinder will fill up your inner tube all the way to the top, where it says 1.00 inch. Looking closely at your inner tube, you will notice a small notch at the top. This is for overflow, or when it rains more than one inch. The water level may be over the one inch mark where there are no marks to measure. You may have to give the cylinder a little shake to get the water line down to an inch or below, where you will be able to measure accurately. When you receive more than one inch of rain, you will need to pour your first inch out and then use the funnel to pour the additional amount into your inner tube, writing it down each time until you have measured the entire amount. To ensure an accurate measurement, please do not round. Also, make sure to put your decimal point in the correct spot, as it will make a huge difference. When you have enough water in your inner cylinder to take a measurement, you may find that it looks like it has a small curve, or a thickness to it. This is called the meniscus. Always measure from the bottom of the meniscus to ensure an accurate measurement. Okay. So this was all about non recurring stain. Now, sources of error in this non regarding strain uh, rain gauges number one is some water is used some of the water is used to wet the surface of the instrument when the instrument is dry and you kept it in rain and the rain starts so initially some water will be absorbed by the surface of this instrument a very small amount but it affects the amount of the total rainfall the rain recorded may be less than the actual rainfall due to the direction of the rainfall is affected by rain. You have seen commonly that whenever there is a rainfall, rainfall is not always perpendicular it with the ground at 90 degree with the ground. It is always is sometimes inclined by the rain uh, by the wind to either direction so in that case and as you know that the cylinder is exactly vertical so in that case we will get less amount of rainfall in the cylinder therefore the amount we measure will be lesser than the actual rainfall dents in the collector and tube may also cause error Last due to evaporation can also take place. These are some of the error that may occur in measurement 
while using standard gauge or the okay next is number two on the recording ring gauges recording ring gauges can be divided into the following three types number one is float type rain gauges number two is weighing type rain gauges and number last is tipping bucket rain gauges tipping bucket type rain gauges so let's discuss the first one float type rain gauge the name indicate that there is a float in this type of rain gauge float mean a light hollow material light hollow object which can flow toward the surface of the water. So these type of rain gauges have a float inside the gauge. So this is a schematic diagram, not the equipment. This is a schematic diagram of these gauges. You can see here, this is a chamber, a reservoir, a water storing chamber. About this, we have the funnel in collector assembly and when it is start rainfall the rain will enter through the funnel and enter this chamber and this chamber has a float material a hollow light material object and when the water is when there is no water this material will be at the bottom when water start entering this chamber this material will start rising up as it always remains at the surface of the water. So this material is further connected to a writing pen and this writing pen is kept on over a rotating drum a rotating drum above which a graph paper is wrapped. This is actually a rotating drum. Rotating drum means rotating clock driven drum rotating clock driven drum mean that this drum is actually rotating that this drum is actually rotating along the with the time with the speed uh, with the seconds or minute time just like the needle of the clock now when water coming into this, when water start coming into this chamber, this float will going rise, will go rising in along this, the pin will also rise. And when the pin rise, this is rotating. So the graph paper is moving. So the pen will write down a graph. The pen will write down a graph of like this type like the pen will create a graph like this this is let's suppose the graph paper and when it is rotating it is increasing like this okay so this is what this is amount of rainfall and this is time so when the time the amount of rainfall increases inside the chamber so this type of rain gauge has a receiver in a float chamber along with some recording mechanism or arrangement. There is a receiver which is not shown in this one but you can take it like this. Like this is let's suppose a receiver. The rainfall water enter into this receiver and to this receiver it is guide it to this chamber okay in this type the rain is led into a float chamber containing a light hollow float this one is float the vertical movement of the float is the level of water rises is recorded on a chart with the help of a pen connected to the float this is pen and here it is a chart like this one okay this the chart is rape around a rotating clock driven drum to provide a continuous record for 24 hours the fluid chamber has either to be very large 
or some automatic means are provided for emptying the float chamber quickly when it becomes full. The pen then returning to the bottom of the chart. You know, uh, as you can see in the previous one, if you need a continuous record for 24 hours, either this float chamber should be very large or there may be some arrangement for emptying this chamber. Whenever it is raining, and let's suppose this is chamber is filled up to this one level, so the recording is complete. Now, if it is raining, in addition to this, so there should be an arrangement, siphoning system, which automatically open when this chamber is completely filled. By opening the wall, the siphoning system this whole chamber will be empty and the and the float will come down to the bottom again and a new chart is starting recording this is usually in some sort of siphoning arrangement this arrangement activates when the gauge records a certain fixed amount of rain mostly 10 millimeter of rainfall snow cannot be measured by this type of rain gauge the second one is the weighing type rain gauge. As you can see by weighing mean actually the water of the rain is weighted by a spring balance in this. This is again a schematic diagram not the equipment diagram. Here is collecting vessel collector. Here it is weighing bucket. The rainfall is coming through collector to the weighing bucket. And when the amount of the rainfall increases at the weighing bucket, this weighing bucket is connected with a spring balance. So the spring balance shows the weight. So when the water increases in the weighing bucket, the spring will compress and the spring is connected to a pen. So the pen will go around with the amount of the rainfall, with the increasing amount of the rainfall. And this pen is again on a chart where is wrapped around a which is wrapped around a clock driven drum a rotating clock driven drum mean that this drum is regularly continuously rotating with the time okay so the wing type ring gauge consists of a receiver this is the receiver a bucket this is bucket in bucket is connected with the spring balance this is the spring balance and this is the recording management recording arrangement is the same same as the previous one the weighing type gauge weights the rain or snow which falls into a bucket which is set on a lever balance now in this gauge we have an additional facility of measurement of snow also in the first one snow cannot be measured but in this one snow can also be measured the weight of the bucket in content is recorded on a chart by clock driven drum this is clock driven drum in this type of chart you will get after the this is the depth of water and this is the time with the time the depth is increased the record is in the form of a graph, one axis of which is in depth units and the other has time. Weighing type, uh, the records show the accumulation of precipitation. Weighing time gauges operate from one to two months without stopping, but normally one chart is enough only for 24 hours. This type of rain gauge has advantage of mining snow also. The receiver is removed when snow is expected. Okay, these type of gauges, weighing type of gauges, can operate for one or two months, but every 24 hour, one chart will be used. So now, an observer will not kept a chart. This is a very simple situation, like in the printer, you can a complete rim at one time. And when you give the print command, one page is printed, another is printed, third one is printed, fourth one is printed. So like this, this gauge has a rim 
and rim of charts and it can continuously operate for one to two months and every 24 hours you will get a chart printed okay the next one is the tipping bucket type ring it's tipping bucket it has a tipping bucket inside this gate this is again the you can see the picture here it is a receiver again funnel this is the first chamber of this tipping bucket and this is the second chamber of this gate now whenever it is raining water will enter through the receiver and the funnel to the first chamber and in the first chamber it will come on this tipping bucket but this tipping bucket is simply you can see a wall when 0.25 millimeter of water is of come on this tipping bucket it fills out and after filling it turns the water into the second chamber so every 0.25 millimeter will create a will create a signal in this tipping bucket instrument and this signal is sent to the receiver of this one finally the receiver will count the total signals multiply by 0.25 will give you the amount of the rainfall this is again an automatic instrument this type of gauge is equipped with a remote recorder located inside the office which is away from the actual site this instrument is, is the actual site in its recorder its receiver is in the office the gauge has two compartments pivoted in such a way that one compartment receives rain at one time the first compartment receives rain and when it fails 0.25 millimeter it tips to the second compartment a certain amount of rain usually 0.25 millimeter fills out one compartment and overbalances it so that it taps emptying into a reservoir and bringing the second compartment of the bucket into place beneath the funnel of receiver as the bucket is tapped by each 0.25 millimeter of rain it actuates an electrical circuit causing a pen to mark on a revolving drum this is just um, for understanding causing a pen mean when an electrical circuit actuates a signal the signal is sent to the receiver to the recorder in the office and the recorded note down that 0.25 millimeter rainfall has been done now the number of signal multiplied by 0.25 will give you the total amount of the rainfall this type of gauge is not suitable for mining snow without heating the collector plotting is similar to that of other recording rain gadget now this mining tube after rain stops the water the total water is stored in this storage tank you can open this wall and measure this total water in this measuring tube so again this is uh, uh, you can say this is a manual method so once you you can compare the result both the result the automatic one result you received in the recorder in the office and this tube comparing these both you can check the accuracy of the equipment okay next is now sources of error again sources of error in these recording type ring gauges again dents if there are dents in the collector the rainfall recorded will not be corrected moistening of inside surface of the funnel and the tube this is again the same one raindrops splashing from the collector for very intense rain some water is still pouring into the already filled bucket inclination of the gauge may result in catching less or more rain than the actual amount error in measurement due to wind these are all the sources of error in all types of rain gauges so what we will do 
far minimizing this error remedial measure for error in precipitation main number one is removal of error due to dents obviously needs repair of the instrument if the instrument has dents it should be repaired before use for rain recorded with dents if you have recorded rain with the dents a correction should be applied okay errors such as moisting of the inside surfaces of the gauge splashing of rain water from the collector and pouring of water into the already filled bucket during an intense rain can only be corrected by some correction factor these are the error which cannot be removed by any method so for these error researchers have found out some correction factor and if we use the those correction factor we can take measure of these errors next is if an instrument is inclined installed inclined inclined instrument needs to be reinstalled it should be removed and reinstalled in exact vertical the correction factor however can be calculated from the angle of inclination and on uh, this correction we will have a small numerical problem you can see how the angle of inclination angle of inclination can be used for the correction for wind protection certain wind shields are designed and used which are called splash guards proper setting of gauge above ground level is necessary No, this one is the example of the inclination of the gauge. A rain gauge, you can see, a rain gauge recorded 125 millimeter of precipitation. Okay. But later on, it was found that the gauge was inclined at an angle of 20 degree with the vertical. Find the actual precipitation. Okay. Rain fall we have recorded a rainfall which is 125 millimeter of precipitation but later on it was found that the rain cage was inclined at a 20 degree with the vertical not exactly vertical not exactly perpendicular to the ground so find the actual precipitation in this situation what will be the actual situation uh, precipitation so data in this situation is number one is p measured how much is p measured Next is angle of inclination is 20 degree with the vertical. So the situation is like this. This is, let's suppose the gauge, the axis of the gauge, vertical line, and angle between the axis of the gauge and the vertical line, which is 20 degree. So in this situation, the solution will be, this is a formula derived from this situation from the vector analysis p actual will be p measure divided by cosine of this angle cos of the angle cos theta so just putting the value of p measured which is 125 millimeter in cos 20 degree so putting the values in calculating we will get the actual precipitation was how much it was 120 133 millimeter but we have measured how much we have measured only 125 millimeter because the rainfall is in this direction and the cylinder or the gauge is in this direction okay next is the last topic of this lecture is the rain gauge network what does the rain gauge network mean it means that if you have an area and you have been asked to install rain gauges in this area to measure rainfall or precipitation so if the area is how much let's suppose it is district Peshawar and you have been asked to measure precipitation for the district Peshawar so how much gauges you will need and where you will install these gauges the simple simple understanding is like if we need accurate measurement so we have to install as many as 
possible rain cages and we have to distribute these rain cages throughout the district throughout the district Peshawar uniformly so that every and each gauge covered uniform area so rain gauge network is what does that mean the number of rain gauges in the distribution affect the nature of the collected precipitation data if the larger the number of rain gauges the more representative will be the data collected but on the other hand we have to observe other factors also like economy of the project accessibility of certain areas and topography of the areas like the simple is is already discussed that if we have more uh, number of rain gauges the data collected will be more representative but on the other hand installing more rain gauges will cause economy cost will be increased and in certain areas it is not possible to install a rain gauges in mayor rain due to topography of the area so in this situation one has to look for some optimum solution so for this optimum solution the world meteorological organization has made following recommendation for minimum number of rain gauges in a catchment in an area these three guidelines are the uh, can be used for minimum area to be covered by a rain cage so in comparatively flat regions flat areas of temperate mediterranean in tropical zone the ideal is at least one station for 230 to 345 square miles however one station for 345 to 1155 square miles is also acceptable if the areas are fleet in the tem uh, in the weather is temperate tropical zone so for 230 to 345 square mile one station is ideal ideal mean if you need more correct data so you can go on this ideal situation ideal mean you will get the more if your project is important you will get more accurate data however if your project is not much important then you can use this guideline also one station for 345 to 1155 square mile is also acceptable now in mountainous regions of temperate mediterranean and tropical zone the ideal is at least one station for 35 to 95 square miles however one station for 95 to 385 square mile is also acceptable the mountainous regions again of temperate weather the ideal situation is that you should install one gauge how much area in 35 to 95 square miles area not more than this if you need ideal data however one station is also acceptable for 95 to 385 square mile if you don't need too much accurate data so up to 385 square mile is also acceptable and edit arid area where there is no or minimum rainfall in polar zones one station for 575 to 3860 square mile is acceptable okay this was all about today's lecture hopefully you will understand this lecture and again these are my recommended textbooks in reading references but as already I have discussed, I am usually using this one, K. Subarmania, Engineering Hydrology, 3rd edition. Thank you very much. If you have any question, any issue or any problem, you can ask me through my email address, hasan.civil.edu.p.